The first step is making the putty. You're gonna mix the base and the catalyst into a uniform mix that has no streaks. You will then roll it and make it as a small sausage. Then you're gonna apply it on the oblique lingual of the teeth and roll it over all the way to the buckle. This way you will not have any bubbles on the occlusal surface of the body. Make sure the putty is well extended to the gingiva to have enough support and stability. Once the putty sets, remove it and check if there are any voids in the internal surface of the, the putty. The next step will be cutting the putty in the center of the tooth prep that you're going to be doing. I am here cutting in the center of the putty. Now make sure uh, to place the putty against the bench. I am holding it here so the camera can can show it better but just be careful uh, not to injure yourself while you're cutting the putty. Now once the blade crosses the other end of the tooth I flip it and I continue cutting all the way down as you see here. Then you're gonna check and see uh, the adaptation of your putty to your tooth. The next step will be the tooth preparation. I usually start on the occlusal surface by making the depth grooves. I usually use a large uh, chamfer burr uh, that has a 1.2 millimeter diameter and I go about two thirds of that burr. That way I will have a range to make any corrections uh, and reduce more if I need to. Next step I do is making depth grooves on the buckle surface. I also go two thirds of the uh, 1.2 chamfer burr and then I connect the grooves together. Then I do the same steps on the lingual wall as well, with the, starting with the depth orientation grooves and then connecting them. The next step is opening the contact using a needle diamond burr or you can also use a 170 carabyte burr or the thinnest burr that you have that can go in between the contacts without risking damaging the adjacent teeth. As you see here I am going through uh, the buckle leaving a thin shell between the adjacent tooth and the prepared tooth. That way I make sure I do not damage the adjacent tooth. 
you also have plenty of range to do that so uh, you don't have to be worried that the bear is going too deep as long as you're keeping a thin shell between the prepared tooth and the adjacent tooth you should uh, you should have a safe uh, range I also go from the lingual side and uh, I keep thinning the contact area until I achieve complete breakage of the contact uh, in that area. Once the contact uh, area is flat, use um, a hand instrument to break the thin shell that you created and that will achieve the safe contact uh, breaking without damaging the adjacent tooth. Then make sure you flatten your finish line in that region using the same bear that you used or any thin chamfer bear that can go interproximally without damaging the adjacent tooth. The same steps are done on the distal uh, proximal contact opening. I then use a large chamfer bear to refine my preparation round the sharp angles and finalize the reductions. While the typodont is in the mouth, uh, you will check with the body and see if your reduction is adequate. In this situation here, we noticed that we had to taper the buccal wall more and reduce more on the occlusal surface. So the next step is making the provisional. 
you will fill two thirds of the cavity with a little bit more material on the proximal surfaces. Then you will place the body back and make sure it's all the way seated. Once the uh, integrity starts to set, remove the body and clean off the excess. The next step will be removing the provisional by elevating using a spoon excavator from the mesial and the distal proximal areas. Once the provisional is removed, check for any overhangs or overextensions and use a coarse red softlex disc to remove those overextensions. Care should be taken not to over, uh, over trim or trim from the contact. So you basically want to trim the excess material and not the actual uh, margin of the provisional. Upon checking here, we, we noticed that there is some overextension on the proximal surfaces of the provisional, so we reduced more of the proximal uh, margins here of the provisional and then we checked again. Using a composite polishing brush, polish the buccal surface, the occlusal surface and the lingual surface of the provisional. Do not polish the proximal surfaces as it might risk having open contact on the provisional.